five years ago, I was living in the um, Pioneer Valley in Northampton, Mass. So well, actually in Haydenville at that point, which is mm -hmm. like a little, um, a little village just north of Northampton, like a bike ride in. And I had uh, a job, like a really good adult job with a retirement plan and uh, health insurance, but I was really um, like bored just I guess bored all the time and and hit just hit 30 and was like oh my god this is like what this is what I'm gonna do until I retire it's just gonna stink so I had a like a pretty frank conversation with my partner about what can I do should I go back to school should we take out a bunch of student loans uh, I you know I don't really want to do that but what are my options just like a few days later we have this witchy friend who emailed us um, and by witchy she's a witch and she was like this uh, this broom maker who lives uh, in the Berkshires is selling his broom business. He's looking for somebody to apprentice, and you guys are kind of weird. And I thought maybe you'd be you'd be interested in checking it out. And we were like, oh my god, this is the universe telling us we need to be broom makers. Brooms are made primarily of broom corn, um, sorghum vulgare. It's this like grass. Uh, here it is, actually, and it's and it's the way that I get it in this form. It's been cut and it has this long stem. So I get big bales of this stuff. Can we just back up a second? Because you said you had a friend who was witchy and you said by that she is a witch. Yeah, she's like a she's a practicing witch. Yeah. Yeah, her name's Dory Midnight. She's wonderful. She makes tinctures and all kinds of stuff. She, uh, she's on IG. <laughs> you can find her. Yeah, she's great. Cool. Yeah. I've never met a witch before, so oh, yeah. this is news to me. They're around. I mean, I, they, they flock to me now. <laughs> when I make the broom, these ones aren't yet woven, but this is uh, this is all done here on this bench. Uh, there's broom corn inside, um, and there. So the shorter broom corn of that first bay is all that is all what you see inside. Um, I wrap around the handle. I add a couple of shoulders to help it with that kind of wide form you're going to see when it's done. And then the longer broom corn uh, is the outer layer. Um, this was in 1870. It's like a, it's an actual shaker broom vice and I stitch every broom with it. So you have the, the shakers really to thank for the broom as we know it and it, it was like the perfect thing you know no one's improved upon the broom because it's it's just there is no way to. It. Broom corn flat stitched you can't get any better than that. But to be totally honest I have like <laughs> we, we have a robot vacuum that <laughs> That's our house because it's just so much easier, you know. Like, uh, but I still, it doesn't do what a broom does, you know. It. it so you it actually have the Roomba. I do. It was great. It was like life changing. But when you got the two kids, like, yeah. yeah. But it still doesn't. It's still not a broom, and it's not going to get into the corners the way that a broom does. So I'm. It's not like I don't sweep. I still have to sweep regularly. But that you set it off at night before you go to bed, and it's like, it does your house? It's amazing. I've wondered about that. It's amazing. I've actually been with dustbuster. <laughs> Thank you.